Peace and greetings, everybody. Divine Zeal here, and it is finally here. We're going to give a um, quick little sneak peek with the new um, PCBs of the um, Ultimate ESP32 cybersecurity tool. Um, but first, I want to uh, talk about, you know, kind of how you go from, you know, a prototype uh, just an idea on a breadboard, just going from an idea on a breadboard all the way to your own um, custom PCB, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I'm not an electrical engineer, um, I'm somewhat new to this, uh, but, you know, with the help of other services online, um, such as Fiverr, um, such as PCBWay, uh, you can go from a prototype idea to um, a PCB, which is a closer step to, you know, your final project, um, final product, uh, just a quick solution, um, maybe for a repair to something, you know, getting a uh, printed circuit board is a really good way to just uh, future proof your stuff and try and keep things as clean, clean and professional as possible. And <clears throat> it really clears up uh, the space of having all these wires, um, a breadboard that, you know, doesn't handle vibration and um, shock and outdoor stuff really well. Um, it's good to really step up and uh, especially go with a quality manufacturer too as well. So let's take a quick look into uh, just the process, <clears throat> how I went from, you know, just like a sketch um, to a full-blown um, real product. So here is the um, first version of the prototype. Um, we have the ESP32, um, the SSD 1306.96 inch screen, SD card, your four buttons. Uh, we have four... Um, 100 ohm resistors and we got uh, hiding there we got a neo pixel as well and um, what is not shown here we also have this uh, GPS as well so the first um, task was trying to fit as much as I can on the uh, GPI GPIO pins of the ESP32. Um, so I pretty much almost maxed out, I pretty much maxed out all the pins I can use. Um, so different iterations will kind of have to somehow um, work around that or make it a little better, especially if I want to use, um, especially if I want to use this, which is I would like in the next version to use this ESP32 C3 Super Mini. And um, it has even um, less pins. So I'm going to need to somehow work something out. So somehow I managed to fit everything in there. Um, and I initially started off with Easy EDA. <clears throat> which is um, a really great uh, free tool. They do have a pro version, um, but this is a great way to just kind of sketch out um, the schematics of your idea. Um, so that's basically um, this breadboard prototype on a more um, electrical engineer point of view. Um, and this was cool because then I got to learn about schematics. So we have the four buttons here, four switches we have the uh, screen and here you can see all the little connections then we have the NeoPixel micro SD RFID module um, I was initially gonna have a battery charger um, but after working with the electrical engineer I realized that um, <clears throat> it is not as easy as just adding one in um, and we couldn't really agree upon, um, we, we really couldn't agree upon a proper 
uh, charger for this um, because of the voltage stuff with the ESP32. So we kind of scrapped this for now <clears throat> and I realize it's not that big of a deal. Um, then we have the uh, GPS. So I initially just uh, made a quick sketch and then I went over to Fiverr. So then I went to Fiverr <clears throat> and I looked around for a little bit and uh, I found uh, this guy and he's um, a really great um, mechanical electronic engineer. And he helped me with my um, PCB design. And uh, as you can see, uh, he does uh, really good work. Um, here are some more uh, complex uh, stuff he's done. Um, so I think when I presented my project, it was, on, it was honestly pretty easy compared to um, other stuff. And um, really good reviews, as you can see. And um, yeah, it was just super helpful. You know, I feel like if you do, you know, the initial legwork of at least gathering together the items, you know, you have a pretty concrete, concrete idea. Um, you could then go through um, someone on Fiverr, you know, I, I highly recommend <clears throat> uh, Talha for sure. Um, because then um, these are the schematics, which I'm going to open source. Um, these are the final uh, schematics um, of the project. And this is the first version. Um, I already have um, improvements. Uh, and every version is, you know, as optimal as it can be. But there's certain things, like the switches are good. Um, I might want to update the screen. I do have some uh, bigger screens that I'm testing. So as you can see, this is the 0.96. And then we have the 1.3 inch. And then we have a 1.8. <clears throat> and these are TFT screens. So there's a full color. <clears throat> and I think that might be a much higher quality. And the screens are pretty much the same price. Um, so there's like improvements like that. Um, this uh, NeoPixel Lite, the WS2812, I should have done the A version. Um, and also, as <clears throat> some other people mentioned, um, there's other less power hungry uh, lights, especially RGBs. Um, the micro SD is uh, good to go because it's kind of really the best and smallest SD module you can have. Um, this RC522 is good. However, this is the um, PN532, it's an NFC module, and it can do way more um, cards. Yet, <clears throat> uh, for the life of me, I can't get this working with the ESP32 uh, for whatever reason. I think these either A may be bad or um, I'm just not connecting them right. So that hopefully will be upgraded, but you know, it's good to have some sort of RFID um, in there. And then the GPS module <clears throat> is good to go. Um, but it's good to really have the schematics because this is like the lifeline of the uh, project and your product. So you could see exactly um, which pins you're using, which pins you're not using, and make sure all the connections are good to go. Because then you have the schematic and then you set it up on your breadboard um, exactly how it should be pin for pin. And then um, if all that's gone, then you're good to go. So um, <clears throat> after he gets the schematic going, I gave him a sketch of um, basically the shape I wanted. Um, so as you can see, we got everything to be um, as compact as possible. However, um, you know, that's a great thing about just prototyping. I do want to just compact things uh, a little bit more. 
And I think this could be accomplished by um, having some of the modules on the back side and solder those first <clears throat> and then solder uh, the other components maybe on top. I don't know. There'd be a lot of playing around um, with that. But uh, Talha was able to um, really do a great job and um, make sure all the tracing is perfect. And um, next time too, I, I didn't really think about it, um, but I also get some mounting holes um, if possible. Uh, so you can kind of um, mount it. Although, you know, there are holes um, on this as well. You see uh, the back side too. So, this is how we got this. Um, PCBWay has been really great uh, working with them, really helpful. Um, these are my first uh, custom PCBs. And um, a lot of people might think PCBWay is just for PCBs, but they actually kind of do quite a lot, um, especially for future products. Um, of course, we have the PCB prototype, but then we can also do PCB assembly. And then we have um, flexible PCBs or rigid uh, PCBs. It's really interesting because um, there definitely are quite a few projects uh, where you might need um, a flexible uh, PCB as well, or even just other materials. You can have uh, metal or aluminum PCBs. Um, you know, of course, then we have uh, some more high quality or advanced ones. Um, but what's also really cool is that they do online CNC and uh, 3D printing. So if you have um, metal projects, I can imagine wooden projects. Um, recently, I've been seeing some wooden um, Raspberry Pi cases, which look uh, really awesome. Seems to be really trendy. Um, and then obviously a lot of 3D printing. And of course, um, because I do um, need some cases. Uh, I will most likely go through um, PCB way as well, because <clears throat> uh, in this case, you know, even if I was to use my 3D printer, um, what if I needed, you know, 10 to 100 um, cases uh, by next week or in two weeks? Um, that would take way too much print time and material and trial and error. Um, maybe on number 50th case, my machine melts down. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of interesting things and especially uh, SMD stencils. Um, but yeah, it's really uh, interesting how much, I mean, even down to laser, cutter, laser cutting, um, spray painting, uh, really anything you could possibly think of, um, they um, probably do. <clears throat> it would probably be a good idea to just take 10 minutes uh, just to see everything um, that they um, can do. And, you know, look at the different materials and you can get quotes. You can just even have the tiniest of ideas and um, they'll help you do that. <clears throat> As you can see, there's also um, online tools. They have uh, the KiCad plugin, um, calculations, trace width. Um, online Gerber viewer. So even if you're on a Chromebook, you can just have your um, Gerber files and view them online. And, you know, if you need to write notes on the go, um, you know, you can upload <clears throat> your Gerber files from your iCloud and, you know, you're just on your iPhone <laughs> checking out your stuff. Um, 3D viewer and electronic design viewer. Yeah, so it's quite a lot um, of awesomeness. Um, but for me, I just went um, and I gave in some basic um, dimensions and I chose, you know, kind of what I wanted. And then here you can uh, choose how many layers uh, you'd like. Uh, for me, I just went with two and then you could choose um, how thick you want. And then here you um, can just go and select every single tiny uh, thing that you would want. <clears throat> um, 
the thickness, also the solar mass color. Um, here, this is uh, what the black looks like. Also did get the uh, purple as well. And uh, this is what the purple looks like. Shine some light on that. The purple looks uh, really amazing, to be honest. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna just get that from uh, here on. That might be uh, the brand color. And then uh, side by side, so you can get a good idea. The black and the purple. Uh, Cause normally, um, you might see like blue and obviously um, I think the standard and the cheapest is uh, green but um, yeah I really I really dig just switching up the colors the black wasn't uh, too much uh, the purple I think is one of the more uh, spendy colors um, but I think it's uh, worth it I mean, just the purple uh, copper traces is just next level. And I can imagine um, you can also do uh, custom colors uh, if you would ask. But yeah, you can um, customize everything, uh, choose all your finishes. You know, you can get um, even thicker copper um, even here, you can um, remove the product number. Um, otherwise, they will add um, the product number on your PCB, which, um, you know, is really no uh, big deal if it's just like a, uh, you know, random project. But for me personally, I paid the extra um, just to get it removed. And here too, you can um, add uh, extra details. Um, I added the name of this product on mine and um, that was you know obviously you could just add it when you're in um, <clears throat> when you're in KiCad or something but I, I forgot but they still added it uh, free of charge and a few times um, there was placement that I wanted the text and they uh, changed it uh, free of charge which was very nice and then yeah you just click calculate and um, You'll send over your Gerber files and you'll basically be good to go. All right, so that was a quick run through. Um, just how I went from <clears throat> my first major projects uh, prototype on just a simple breadboard um, to working with uh, PCB way and creating uh, the first um, product really of my little business venture of sorts um, but with these ones um, i'm going to uh, a open source and um, b have kits available and c um, be selling the full um, product for those who um, maybe don't have sol soldering experience um, don't really want to or know where to source the parts or you know you just want a um, easy go-to and you know this should just be able to fit in your pocket like that no one even knows you got a hacker tool on you and um the next video the next few videos we're going to do the um assembly uh, so i'll show you how to um, assemble this and um, get all the parts and uh the, the next real videos because the hardware is the first part um but the software that i'm writing for this <clears throat> and finalizing it's it is done um but i need to really finalize it so i can make it open source <clears throat> and um that's going to be free just 100 percent. you know whether you want to use it with this or put it on your own esp esp32 projects um that's that's up to you um but yeah, I'm excited to um, also just for future products um, work with PCB Way again. Um, I have a video where I'm I'm working on um, fixing this arcade machine, and I have a um, prototype PCB <clears throat> that's supposed to help with the LEDs. And I um, 
I'm almost ready to move to the PCB phase for that because this stuff just really saves you um, all the time of setting up wires and, um, you know, having to, you know, use the breadboard. Like, this really can't be, <laughs> this isn't discreet at all. You know, I, I can't put this in my pocket, you know, and um, if I'm sitting in a cafe or something with all these wires, that looks a little uh, weird. But this, you know, just, you know, this, you can't, you can put this, you know, in a little shoebox. And um, it just looks a lot more cleaner and professional. And, um, you know, these copper traces are basically the wires. Um, so overall, yeah, really pleased and um, excited to move to the next phase. I am waiting on some parts, so I, I couldn't um, complete this exactly. Um, I had uh, one of the, the LEDs I had was, it's a little bit different, so I'm getting uh, a new uh, version of that. Um, but rather than that, everything's ready to go. Um, so thank you for watching and uh, check you guys out on the next video.